So uh, hi there again everyone, this is again Alan and welcome to my channel. I hope you guys had a very meaningful and solemn Lenten weekend and I hope you also had enough rest and time with your family during this season. And to conclude, this Sunday afternoon I'm gonna be reviewing Simba Lion Watercolor Cake. This brand, Simba Lion, is a very popular brand, at least here in the Philippines, because of its high availability and cheap price. I only chose the 16 colors despite the idea that the 24 and 36 colors are uh, also good choices and more popular. Because I am targeting to uh, review this for students who are looking for cheaper choices yet still have uh, at least... 12 colors and aside from that uh, during this uh, summer vacation at least here in the Philippines I'm gonna be reviewing after this two other cheap buys which are Dong A and Best Buy both also from National Bookstore and um, by the way I bought this in National Bookstore for 139 Philippine pesos or uh, 2.5 US dollars that's quite quite cheap as compared to some student grade or even the professional watercolors and um, let's check this uh, Simba Lion is made in China it says here let me focus okay it's made in China it's non-edible though it's non-toxic and it has some instruction here on how to use the cover as a mixing palette It's still tight, okay. So it says here that when you turn the cover 180 degrees, it won't be detached. But when you turn it uh, 90 degrees, you can lift it. You can lift the cover and set it aside and use it as a mixing palette. But I'm okay with it just being spread 180 degrees. So earlier, I have prepared this um, Arches 185 cold press uh, swatch that we're using and also a sketch of landscape that we'll be doing later on. I'm not re-wetting uh, the, the cakes. I'm gonna be painting them directly as like uh, how I do when, in some of my swatches and reviews. Anyway, this comes with a brush. I don't know if this is natural hair or not but I think I'm not gonna be using it I'm using my uh, Isabay brush instead because I prefer pointed and I, I think it's not that good <laughs> so let's start sorry it's not focused let me just zoom it nearer to the swatches so uh, I almost forgot putting the <laughs> transparency line so I uh, you just added it and um, again, I am not uh, re-wetting prior swatching any of my watercolor pans to be fair. So let's start with white. By the way, the color names are not provided so I just uh, googled some reference though still I am not 100% um, sure if these names are how the manufacturer named them because I can't find the website. If you happen to find the exact um, names of these colors, you can drop the comments down below. And um, next is uh, lemon yellow. Oops. The marker is still wet. The cakes are actually uh, not that easy to rewet, but it's workable. I think it's better to rewet it when you're using it. Next is chrome yellow. Let me zoom it in. So the colors are actually uh, okay for the price but they're not that super vibrant this is light brown which looks like 
the light brown <laughs> or maybe rose yellow next is yellow green you can see it's kind of hard to uh, rewet and this one is very opaque and I'm afraid that it will be chalky once we mix them together this is blue green but this is very nice this is like um, a jade green or a nearly turquoise or turquoise <laughs> next is orange which is also good so far the colors are all opaque or semi opaque next is vermilion which is again kind of like a peach I don't know how it appears on screen but in person it looks more like a pastel peach next is rose red this is so far the most transparent next is purple this is very light it looks like lilac or a cobalt violet next is light purple which is just a purplish shade of pink this is semi opaque uh, this purple looks also transparent by the way next is a pale red flesh I think this is just pink a very pale pink and it's also opaque next is sky blue and this is very vibrant as compared to others but it's also at the same time opaque you see how opaque the white is and it's starting to get chalky I think also the other color next is cobalt blue probably this is a cobalt blue hue because it looks like a PB15 pigment but it's uh, intense next we have reddish brown which is also very intense but uh, also opaque and lastly we have black so here are the Symbaline watercolors and um, they are actually uh, okay vibrancy wise but for opaqueness um, for transparency I think most of them are at least um, semi opaque or semi transparent the most transparent one is only the rose red yeah but uh, most are very opaque like this uh, reddish brown the white even the light brown and the lemon yellow they did not provide any pigment information so we can, cannot also find uh, light fastness information so we cannot expect anything from this brand and since this is also recommended for student use so next to our landscape so this is again a combination of sky mountain and uh, a body of water so let's start with the sky let's use I like the 
purple because it's um, semi-transparent and let me mix it with let's have a light blue green I want a neutral sky so this is the mixture of blue green and uh, the purple and this is a very nice muted gray or sorry purple and for the clouds let's just leave those areas let's just leave them white The colors, the colors moving very well in our chest paper at least. And this is not bad, especially for the price of just um, 139 Philippine pesos or two dollars for 16 colors and for students. Now let's proceed to the C. You can uh, use the same color as the sky, but you can also add uh, blue just to vary it a bit. And let's just do it very lightly. And let's not forget to leave white spaces for the reflection of the clouds or the sky. And for the mountain, um, I think we're gonna use again the purple and the uh, blue green, but let's make it deeper this time by me by adding. Um, I think uh, let's use okay, let's use um, black and reddish brown. Let's see if this doesn't get chalky. So for this clay, let's use it for this mountain. So far, it looks transparent. So this is the mountain. And for the more, for the far mountain, let's use the paint that is left from the sky and added the blue by the way this is just a loose a very very loose watercolor painting so I'm not gonna be very going to be very detailed here For the landscape, or I mean the sand part, the ground part, that's where I'm using the light brown and with I think um, reddish brown. And again, uh, purple. For another um, mountain and key part, let's add some greens. 
I want an olive green, so I'm using yellow with brown, with a light brown, and to be darkened by violet. And let's have it here. So, let's also have some foliage or landscape here. And also, let's not forget the reflection. And also, some more greens, uh, even at the distant horizon. to the sky and make it a little bit warmer because I always want a warm sky and for that I'm gonna be mixing uh, lemon yellow and orange but just a very very light wash for that So I have some sky. And let's also even it out. So before we add some more uh, details and darker areas, darker uh, tones, Let's wait for it to dry a bit. So now that it's almost dry, let me just zoom it nearer. And as you can see, the colors are actually getting flat as they get dry. Even the uh, swatches later on, I'm gonna be comparing them quickly side by side with other brands that we have swatched so that you have more idea how it fares. So I, while waiting for this to get dry, I uh, already mixed um, dark tones and I used black for the deeper shades and details. So let's put the deeper colors in our water. And this dark blue is a combination of uh, the cobalt blue and black. Next is some um, dark brown for some rock formations. This dark brown is a combination of um, reddish brown and black. I think for this kind of, uh, for this quality of watercolor, you need black to achieve uh, deeper tones. 
different values that you need to uh, achieve. Because it may be difficult to create deep uh, grays using only the primaries or without black. Next, um, let's also have some more deeper ground details. To make it more obvious that this is the ground. Also some tree trunks. some more greens for the landscape and some more let's assume there are birds there and let's also show the horizon There you go. And we also add some more deeper strokes in our sky. This is our landscape using Symbolion watercolors. It's not actually that uh, vibrant, especially in person. It, it, it looks flat. It's not that chalky, but there are some, you can see how uh, opaque they are. So I tried uh, not using the colors that are opaque, but I cannot avoid them because almost all are uh, very opaque and chalky you can see that the colors easily transfer to your finger when you rub especially this with the white see. so you have to be careful in using these types of watercolors especially especially if you are um, not using cotton paper if you're using just ordinary paper so now we can uh, compare side by side Symbaline swatches with other watercolor brands that we have uh, already swatched. As you can see, it's very uh, opaque. It almost cover the transparency black uh, line that we have. So uh, we can uh, compare this to Winsor Newton Professional. You can see the difference. Also with the uh, White Knights, 36 colors. So. You can see how pastel the Symbaline watercolors are. Also with Shinhan, GWC. See? Even to uh, the student grade Dale Rowney. The student uh, grade Dale Rowney is actually even more um, vibrant and transparent. Even with Pinta PH and of course Daniel Smith 
also with Lucas. Lucas Aquarel is also uh, um, categorized by some as student grade but is also obviously uh, more pigmented and transparent than Simbalayan. And of course also my favorite handmade uh, Egali watercolor from Italy. This is very uh, nice. And even to Mary's watercolor, I actually um, reviewed this before and considered it as kind of a uh, light colored uh, watercolor but as compared to Simbalayan actually Maris is uh, be um, better and more vibrant even the landscape painting you can see the difference and much more also to superior superior watercolor is very vibrant actually one of the most vibrant that I've used you can compare also the landscape and even with Sakura Poi. So, um, if you're gonna ask me if I am going to uh, recommend Simba Lion, um, if you have more uh, budget, if you have bigger budget, and um, it, if, it, if it won't hurt your pocket then I think you can uh, just consider other brands but if you are um, just practicing or if it's just for um, let's say uh, grade school and uh, you want uh, non-toxic watercolor paints this is not bad and um, if you just you know study how the paint behaves you can still achieve uh, a painting that is yeah, quite decent with this but yeah generally generally most of the colors are very opaque, uh, pastel-like, and um, yeah, chalky. So um, that's my review for the Simbalion watercolors. And um, I hope you guys stay tuned for the next watercolors that I'll be reviewing are the Dong A and Best Buy. And let's see, let's also compare this um, Simbalion to those two. So. Thank you for watching and I hope you guys subscribe if you are not yet subscribed. Till next video, goodbye!